Chapter 6 Fame and Fortune Beckons The boys lay spread-eagled on the cool grass of the local school that lay empty because of the summer break. They sat in the shade of a concrete outbuilding to protect them from the searing heat of the afternoon sun which was now at its hottest. Simon rolled a football under his head and used it as a pillow. Got any cigs, Jensen, dude? he asked. Sorry, mate. I've only got the one left, replied Jensen. Two's up, then, you tight git, said Simon, drifting back into his native Yorkshire accent. Er, uh, maybe later, Simon. I'm trying to cut down a bit. Okay, Jam, buddy. I'll hold you to that. Have you smoked all those cigs already, Jensen? asked Harry. No, not yet, but I have smoked half of them. But I only saw you smoke one, and you've only got one left. Yeah, that's correct. So there was only two cigarettes in that packet that you nicked from your dad then? Er, uh, yeah. My God, Jensen, you're incorrigible. Thanks, Harry. I do try my best. No, incorrigible, not... Oh, never mind, exhaled Harry. A long, lazy silence ensued as the summer heat drained the very energy that was needed to speak. Dippy had fallen asleep and was snoring loudly. Jesus, is he weird or what, man? said Simon. Yeah. I reckon he's not eternal. That's knocked eternal, Jen, said Harry lazily. Mind you, he's not as weird as a Yorkshireman who thinks he's American. Eh, hey, Simon? Hey, Harry, buddy. I can't help the way that I talk. And the Pope's a Dutchman. And why don't you talk like that in front of your mother then, Simon? I'll tell you exactly what your problem is, Simon. You're watching far too many of those expensive American video movie tape things. They're influencing your whole personality, added Jensen. Hey Jensen, buddy. We didn't pay for the video player, dude. It's a complimentary one from my father's stock. He invested our entire life savings in those brand new state-of-the-art Betamax video machines. That's where the future is. Everybody will want to be the Max Video Player one day. It's got a superior picture quality to the rival VHS players. And it's much smaller, so we're gonna make a mint, dudes. I'm telling you, it's money in the bank for sure. Sounds really good, that Simon. But we can't even afford a coloured telly. Never mind a, a voodoo player, said Harry as he closed his eyes and daydreamed out loud. By the time I'm 25, I'm going to be a millionaire. Just like your dad nearly is, Simon. Oh, yeah? Like how, dude? Uh, well, I haven't exactly quite figured that one out yet. But I'm not going to be like my mum and dad, doing a pound's worth of work for ten bob's worth of money and having to scrimp and save all the time. Sell that for a game of soldiers. What's it like being well off, Simon? Asked Jensen. What's it like having money to burn? You see, that's what you guys will never understand. It's not having money to burn. It's about having money to spend. And anyways, you guys don't have to suffer bloody piano lessons, he said, with his accent slipping again. Yeah. That's true enough, conceded Jensen. Hey guys, you know what we should do? We should start up our own business. Jensen was immediately interested. That's a good idea, Simon. Instead of just wasting time all summer, sat around here, we could be making mega books too. I like the sound of that. I say, let's go for it. What have we got to lose? Agreed Harry. Right, dudes, that's decided then. We're gonna start a business. And then it all went quiet again 
as the boys imagined all the money they'd make and what they'd spend it on. Then Harry had a thought, which seemed relevant. Hey Simon, you know when a handle breaks off a cup? He piped. Um, yeah? What about it? Well, do your family keep it? Or do they throw it away? Why do you want to know that, Harry dude? Just a question. That's all, Simon. But why do you want to know... Simon! Snapped Harry impatiently. Just answer the bloody question, and then I'll tell you. All right, all right. Keep your hair on, man. Simon hesitated, then said, What was the question again? And he giggled. Harry grimaced, and Simon laughed even more. I'm only winding you up, dude. You want to calm down a bit, or you'll get high blood pressure. Take another steroid or, or something, man. Do you take steroids, Harry? asked Jensen. No, I bloody don't, snapped Harry again. It's all bloody natural, is this? he said, flexing his muscles. And stop changing the subject, will ya? Why do you do bodybuilding, Harry? asked a smirking Jensen. It's not bloody bodybuilding. I keep telling you. It's bloody weight training. There's a big difference, I think. Now will someone answer the bloody question? What question? chirped Jensen. The question about the broken mug, said Harry. What broken mugs? It wasn't me. I wasn't even there, dude, laughed Simon again. Harry was now incensed. It's a bloody posh test. If you throw your mugs away when the bloody handle breaks off or they've got a crack in them, then you're bloody posh. So do you keep the cups or do you throw them away? Jensen thought for a moment, then grinned. So what is the difference between weight training and bodybuilding then, Harry? My God, how many more times, Jensen? Bodybuilding is lifting weights to gain muscle. And weight training is lifting weights to, to, uh, uh, to keep yourself bloody fit. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean, said Jensen, laying back slowly and drawing on a freshly lit cigarette. Oh, and it builds your stamina as well, continued Harry. Oh, does it now? Yeah, uh, and it teaches you self-discipline. Yeah, it seems to, smirked Jensen. Oh, uh, and it channels your bloody energy so you can keep control and... and... <sighs> Harry stopped suddenly and realised what was going on. Jensen exhaled smoke and spoke at the same time. You mean... He stops you getting wound up, Harry. Yes, it bloody does. I mean, I mean, yes. Yes, it does indeed, Jensen. Oh, smiled Jensen. Have you been taking the piss, Jen? Yeah. Yeah, I have been, Harry. Oh, good one. You got me there. Yeah, yeah, I did, didn't I? What was the question again? Asked Simon, innocently. Eh, uh, oh shit. I've forgotten now replied Harry. With the debate over, and in the almost tropical heat of Yorkshire, it fell silent again. But eventually, Jensen remembered what they'd actually been talking about in the first place. Oh, yeah. A business. That's it. What shall we do then, Simon? Um, something that makes money, dude, answered Simon. Well, obviously. But doing what? There's lots of ways to make money, guys. Well, name one then, said Harry. I can name lots, man. I've got a business brain. Just like my old pub. Well, name some then, added Jensen. Simon fought for a few seconds, then announced. Car washing, that's it. Everyone's car is covered in dust due to the lack of rain. 
they would pay a small fortune to have them washed. We could, er, um, clean up, dudes. But Jensen had spotted an obvious flaw. Um, what are we supposed to do? Pay on the cars? He asked. Er, yuck, Jensen, dude. Why on earth would we pee on them? Well, there's a horsepipe ban because of the water shortages. So we wouldn't actually have any water, would we? God damn it, you're right. So Simon thought it over again and then said, What about dog walking? Or, or, or ironing? Why not combine the two and iron the dogs? Laughed Jensen. Hey, let's take this seriously, guys. So they all concentrated and waited for the idea to come to them. And it actually did. Because according to a certain William Shakespeare, some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. Harry, Jensen, Simon and Dippy were unknowingly about to have greatness thrust upon them. It all started when Dippy's snoring stopped and the sound was replaced with a faint rustling of paper. Seconds later, he popped something into his mouth and rolled the circular object around with his tongue. And that seemingly insignificant little object was about to bring them fame and fortune on a scale that was beyond even their wildest daydreams. 